there's something you should probably know before we go too far, and that's how to read the heads-up display, or HUD. Your health is found in the bottom left corner, ammo in the bottom right, crosshair in the middle, and kill feed in the top right. At the very top of the screen is the round's timer and team information, and at the very bottom is info on the current objective. Like a lot of other games, there are two teams. In Team Fortress 2, these teams are red and blue. The teams usually hold, at most, 12 players on each side. Players can choose to play as any one of the nine characters or classes at any time. By default, there are no limits to how many people can play a class at once. Though, maintaining a balanced class composition is important for a team's success in a match. This game is a first-person shooter, meaning you must aim your crosshair onto enemies and click on them to help win the game. So all I have to do is shoot people? That's epic. This will be so easy. But that's not everything. Oh, bitch. Your team needs to work together to complete an objective, even if that means filling the other team's dudes full of holes to get there. There are a few different objectives, depending on the game mode, which also depends on the map you're playing on. The most popular game modes in TF2 are Control Point, Symmetrical and Attack Defend, King of the Hill, Payload, Payload Race, and Capture the Flag. In Control Point, the goal is to capture all of the enemy points before time runs out, while preventing your points from being captured. To capture a point, simply standing on it until it is captured will do. You must capture the point that is next before the one after that can be unlocked. The more teammates that are standing on the point at once, the faster it captures. Capturing points also adds time to the round's timer. To stop an enemy from capping a point, simply also stand on the point and kindly tell them no. In symmetrical control point, the teams must capture all neutral and enemy points while simultaneously defending the ones they have. In attack defend, red defends while blue attacks. Red cannot capture back the points that blue captures. These rounds begin with a setup phase before the battle begins, where Red has time to plan and set up defenses. King of the Hill finds both teams fighting for control over a single central control point, with each team having their own timers. Whoever runs their timer down first wins. In Payload, Blue Team must push a cat with... a cart with... No, you know what? Yeah, cat. Blue team must push a cat carrying a big ass bomb into Red's base, push it off a cliff, and blow it up to win. These matches are much like Attack Defend, where Red has a setup phase before the round starts proper, and cannot retake points captured by Blue. The payload cat heals Blue team and replenishes their ammo as long as they are pushing the cat. If no attackers have pushed the cat in 30 seconds, the cat will slowly start moving backwards to the last captured checkpoint. Red team must obviously prevent the bomb from reaching their base by stalling blue and running down the clock. In Payload Race, both teams have a cat that they need to push to its end whilst keeping the other team from doing the same. Here, there is no round time limit. The first team to successfully push their cat to the end wins the round. Capture the flag is pretty self-explanatory. Your team must defend your flag while also trying to grab the enemy flag from their base and bring it back to yours to capture it. A final note on objectives. While the core game is centered around completing objectives, a lot of people don't take the objective super seriously, which is cool. TF2 isn't a highly competitive game at its core. In fact, it's rather silly to take it too seriously. Some folks like to just have fun goofing around and being friendly. Just don't kill friendlies, it's not cool. To recap, games usually revolve around objectives which vary by map. You can use any class on either team for any game mode. Okay, cool. I know what to do now, you might be thinking. But what are we going to need to prevent the enemy team from completing their goals? That's right! WEAPONS! Hey, me bottle is scrumpy! In this game, without weapons, all you can do to your opponents is fume at them. 
deposing scout. Wow! Luckily, every class has at least three different weapons. A primary, a secondary, and a melee. Most weapons deal different amounts of damage to enemies depending on the weapon. Weapons don't deal any damage to teammates, however. Some ranged weapons fire bullets. These instantly hit their target at any range. Some ranged weapons fire projectiles, like rockets or grenades, basically not bullets. These, unsurprisingly, take time to travel from where you fired it to its destination. All ranged weapons suffer from damage falloff, meaning weapons are less hurdy the further away your target is from you. Your melee weapon deals respectable damage, but only reaches a few feet in front of you and leaves you very vulnerable. Most melee weapons have the same damage and swing speed besides scout and spy. All weapons have a small chance to randomly roll a critical hit. Critical hits deal triple a weapon's base damage and also ignores damage falloff. All ranged weapons require ammo. Most weapons need to be reloaded from your stock of reserve ammo. When your weapon isn't at full ammo, it will be reloaded. If you are totally out of ammo for your primary and secondary weapons, you are left with only your melee weapon, which generally means you're boned. When you take damage, you lose health. A damage indicator will show which direction the source of the damage came from. To not die, try not to get shot at. <laughs> but seriously, avoid enemy fire with evasive maneuvers or by taking cover. To replenish lost health, you might find a friendly engineer's dispenser, or even better, a friendly medic to fix you up good as new in no time. When in a pinch, you can also pick up health and ammo via pickups all around the maps. Medkits and ammo boxes come in three sizes, small, medium, and BIG, which respawn shortly after a player takes one. In addition, every team's base has a resupply cabinet, which instantly replenishes all health and ammo. When your health reaches zero, you die and drop ammo. Your killer is shown in what is called the freeze cam, and you have to wait to respawn back at your base. While waiting to respawn, you will be spectating your teammates and various points of interest. When a player kills another player, that interaction will be broadcast in the kill feed for a few seconds, visible to all players in the server. If someone helps kill an enemy, they are credited with an assist. Interactions involving you will be colored white on your end to distinguish them from others. If someone kills the same enemy four times in a row without them killing back, they are considered dominating the victim. The dominated can gain revenge if they end the domination streak. To recap, all classes have weapons. Most require ammo, suffer from damage falloff, can randomly crit, and deal no damage to teammates. All classes also have health they must manage. Health and ammo can be refilled in various ways. If you die, you gotta wait. <laughs> Finally! Now let's talk about the game's classes. The playable classes available are Scout, Major League, Soldier, Pyro, Demo Man, Heavy, Engineer, Medic, Sniper, and Spy. Gentlemen. Each of the nine classes have their own abilities and drawbacks and are all tailored to different styles of play. For example, you have the Long Range Assassin Sniper, Area Denial Specialist Engineer, or the Run and Gun Scout. Each class has counters, or other classes that are designed to have certain advantages over another. Examples include Pyro over Spy and Spy over Engineer. You're already familiar with the character's personalities, but now's the time to learn what they can do in-game. Grab yourself a bucket of chicken, because it's time to re-meet the team. Scout, the baddest boy from Boston, has the fastest foot speed of any class, yeah. can double jump, yeah. and is especially strong in close to mid-range yeah. fights. He also counts as two people when capping points and pushing the payload as well. However, he is among four classes that are tied for having the lowest health. Oh, crap. Using his primary, the Scattergun, Scout can get in close and deal high damage while quickly weaving in and out of combat. His pistol can make Swiss cheese at mid-range for weaker damage, and his bat swings faster but does less damage than the other melee weapons. Which is weird considering this guy can one-hand a metal bat with ease. Scout can use his unique movement ability, double jumping, to reach places other classes can't, change paths in mid-air to dodge enemy fire, or to potentially save himself from fall damage. 
All right, maybe not that far. Due to his speed and also being uniquely able to capture points twice as fast, Scout excels at sneakily capturing unguarded objectives, also known as back capping. Due to his low health, Scout's most effective counters are heavy damage dealers like Pyro, Soldier, Demo Man, and Engineer's sentry guns. You might be able to dodge other things, but you can't easily outrun the deadly aim of a sentry. In summary, weak class, run fast, jump twas, get in and big blast, sentry will kill your ass. <laughs> Soldier, the all-American 12-time reigning champion war criminal, utilizes his trusty rocket launcher to reach new heights, literally. He has the second slowest foot speed of all classes, but has the second highest health and great damage to make up for it. Soldier can stuff four rockets straight into the no-no end of his primary, the rocket launcher. Cause he's kooky like that, I don't know. His rockets travel predictably, but fairly quickly. Rocket explosions deal high damage to targets, and can hit multiple targets at once with the magic of Flash damage. Be cautious, as Soldier's own rockets also damage himself, Though this can be used in his favor to rocket jump, aka looking at the ground, jumping, and firing a high explosive projectile directly underneath his squishy meat body. Cause he's kooky like that, I don't know. Rocket jumping takes Soldier from being one of the slowest classes to the one with the highest mobility in the game, and grants him a wide degree of flexibility in his mobility. Illity illity. Side effects of excessive rocket jumping include explosionitis and sudden onset fall damage. His secondary weapon, the shotgun, is great for finishing off those who have been weakened by a rocket or for when you're out of rockets. If all else fails, dig your enemy's grave with his melee weapon, the shovel. While Soldier is quite versatile, he is most powerful when he has the high ground, where splash damage is most effective. Trying to deal with enemies above you using rockets will be much less effective, and Soldier's enemies will know this. Dear God. Scout has the mobility to dodge your projectiles and outpace you to get in close. Pyro can use their air blast to send your projectiles back at you, and your teammates. Soldier's slow foot speed also makes him very vulnerable to sniper and spy picks, if you're not careful. To summarize, Soldier is tough and slow, but rockets, rockets explode, explode! Dealing splash damage and allowing you to rocket jump. Also, America! Splash... Next up is Pyro, everyone's favorite homicidal gender anarchist. Real name Gerard Way, Pyro's primary method of death dealing is by lighting shit on fire. Having higher than average speed and health, and capable of heavy rapid short range damage, he makes for an excellent ambush class. Her primary is the flamethrower. Hold down left click to unleash a steady short range spouting of flames. The flamethrower deals extremely rapid damage at close range, and also sets enemies ablaze leaving them with Afterburn, aka the Help I'm on Fire debuff, that deals damage over time. The longer you hold flames on an enemy, the longer they'll be left with Afterburn. Although it will eventually stop on its own, quickly removing Afterburn is as easy as healing or jumping into water. Unsurprisingly, the flamethrower is completely ineffective underwater. All pyros are passively immune to afterburn on account of their fire-protected suits, but still take direct contact damage from flames. Pyro is especially good for what is known as spy checking. The spy can disguise himself as any class. As there is no friendly fire in TF2, sweeping flames across teammates is the most efficient for checking if a teammate is really an enemy spy in disguise. Due to the presence of enemy pyros, you'll notice that your teammates will be coming down with a case of the Help I'm on Fires a lot. Luckily, utilizing the fabled right-click technique, the flamethrower can fire a burst of pressurized air at the cost of a chunk of ammo. This air blast can instantly extinguish any teammates you aim at in range. Please do this all the time. All of your teammates want this. They even made it heal you as an added incentive to keep your teammates alive. Air Blast can also push back enemies who are too close for tactical repositioning purposes. This is especially useful against invulnerable enemies to stop them from pushing forward. Air Blasts can also reflect enemy projectiles back at them and deal bonus damage. 
Tyro's secondary weapon, the shotgun, is ideal for mid-range encounters where the flamethrower isn't as effective. Keep it handy for finishing off retreating enemies or dealing with enemies you've air blasted away. Pyro's shotgun taunt is unique in that it can actually instantly kill enemies that are too close or unfortunate enough not to pay attention. Finally, the Pyro wields a fire axe for his melee weapon. It's thematic, and she can play it like a guitar. All of this makes Pyro a strong offensive class for quickly ambushing multiple enemies at close range. But Pyro might lose a fight at this range if they don't have to jump on their enemy. Soldiers will try to abuse splash damage if you mistime your air blasts. Heavy will just shred you with his minigun and superior health. And completely outside of their range, Pyro is sure to have trouble against enemy snipers. To summarize, Finally, the Pyro wields a fire... Fire axe. Demoman, the often inebriated Highlander, is all about explosives, and lots of them. With a respectable max health and decent run speed, Demoman is a good self-reliant defense class. His powerful ranged weapons are both explosive and projectile based, and fire in an arcing trajectory rather than in a straight line, which means you can play aggressively, but it may make short range encounters more difficult if you miss your projectiles. His primary weapon, the grenade launcher, fires, you guessed it, grenades that bounce, roll, then detonate after a short time. They also explode upon direct hits against enemies, dealing max damage. Demo's secondary weapon, the sticky bomb launcher, is where his defensive capabilities really shine. It can lay out up to eight stickies, named as such because they stick to nearly any surface, be it floors, walls, or ceilings, and don't explode until you right-click to detonate them. This is perfect for laying out traps near important areas or to bait enemies into. Right-clicking detonates all of your stickies at once, at any range, no matter what weapon you're holding. Trying to deploy another sticky bomb while the maximum of eight are already set will simply detonate the oldest bomb. Stickies need a little time to arm before they can be detonated. They'll need extra time after arming to be able to deal max damage. This is to promote using them defensively and to dissuade sticky spam. Do note that your stickies can be destroyed by being shot at and displaced by explosions and air blasts. Your stickies are also destroyed when you die. Despite the limitations, stickies aren't necessarily just for defense. You can use them offensively by rapidly firing and immediately detonating stickies as you launch them at enemies, otherwise known as sticky spam. <laughs> These weapons are perfect for fulfilling Demo's role as Engineer's Worst Fucking Nightmare. Just a few explosives placed around an engineer's nest will destroy his buildings completely. Demo Man can perform explosive jumps, much like Soldier, which are easiest to pull off using stickies. Sticky jumps can send you flying if you time it right. Just walk over one, jump, then detonate. An overlooked quirk of the sticky bomb launcher is that you can hold down left click to charge the launcher and shoot stickies much further. If you need to, Demo Man always has his beloved bottle of Scrumpy to aid him in close range fights. As Demo Man, your main weakness is learning to lead your arcing shots effectively. If you miss, you risk letting classes get in closer than you might be able to deal with. Learn to control the battlefield with stickies to force enemies into favorable positions for you and your team. Also watch out for pyros who can displace your projectiles using air blast. To summarize, compensate for arcs, set epic traps, or not, I, I don't care. Gaslight gatekeep girl boss engineers. Behold, the mighty heavy weapons guy, whose minigun can lay down ferocious firepower that makes lesser men wish they had bigger guns as they run away and cower in fear. As his name implies, the Siberian Strongman is the bulkiest class in the game, sporting the highest base health of any class by far, though he also has the slowest running speed in the game. The heavy's primary weapon, the minigun, has a ridiculously high rate of fire and will mow down enemies at close range with ease. At longer distances, damage is minor, but sustained fire is good for deterring advancing enemies by chipping away their health. To use the minigun, hold left click to spin up the minigun's barrels and immediately start firing. 
Alternatively, holding right click will keep the gun spun up and ready to fire. Note that spinning up locks you in an even slower movement speed where you also cannot jump. A good strategy to use with the minigun is jumping around corners while spinning up the minigun first to catch bad guys off guard. The secondary weapon for the heavy weapons guy is the shotgun. Not quite as heavy, but it does allow you to have some ranged firepower while staying relatively mobile. His melee weapons are cool too. He uses his bare fists. Heavy's large, burly stature makes great cover for his teammates to rally around, and with assistance, he is great at taking down sentry guns. Heavy is an excellent pick for attacking on payload, as his spun-up walk speed matches that of the cart, which constantly supplies him with infinite ammo and healing while pushing. As for weaknesses, Heavy's large presence on the battlefield and very slow movement speed makes him the biggest and loudest walking-talking bullseye in recorded history to enemy snipers and spies, so be careful out in the open. You must also be careful of enemies that can bum-rush you before you have your minigun ready to attack. In summary, he's a slow-walking tank with a big gun that does big damage, and a littler gun that does littler damage. He'll rely more on teammates to stay in the fight and must avoid snipers and spies at all costs. I solve practical problems. For instance. Next, we have the engineer. On his own, his combat capabilities aren't much to write home about. Slower and stockier than the scout and tying blast for base health. However, what he lacks in raw power or mobility, he makes up for with his unique ability, building. And there's nothing that this soft-spoken, hard-working country boy loves more than building. Engineers use a unique, separate resource called metal, along with his PDA and his wrench, to construct, upgrade, and repair his various buildings. These contraptions aid his team and hinder the enemy. Sentries survey an area and automatically fire upon enemies in range. Dispensers provide unlimited healing, ammunition, and metal for teammates. And teleporters teleport. Constructing and maintaining buildings requires metal. Metal comes from the same resources you'd find ammo. Ammo packs, resupply lockers, friendly dispensers, and a friendly payload cart. Once you have the metal, you can choose to build almost anywhere you'd like. You can even rotate the building before setting it up. While setting up, whacking it with your wrench actually makes it build faster. Once fully constructed, all buildings can be upgraded from level 1 to level 2 using 200 metal. Do this again to max them out to level 3. Upgrades increase the efficiency of your buildings. For example, more healing from your dispenser and a faster cooldown between teleports. When your buildings take damage, they lose health. If they reach zero health, they are destroyed. You can use metal to repair their damage and, in the case of sentry guns, refill its ammo as well. Constructed buildings can also be hauled into another position by right-clicking them. Be careful, if you die while hauling a building, it will be destroyed too. For Engineer, you'll likely have to play a few rounds on various maps to learn where good spots are to place your buildings for them to be most effective. Work somewhat behind the front line to give your teammates a good spot to retreat to. Also play around objectives that are being attacked. Building your sentry on last point where nobody is isn't going to do much. Don't get too attached to your buildings, however, as they're not around forever. Despite the power of his buildings, Engineer never has total control over the battlefield. Your sentries aren't foolproof. His buildings are also fairly weak when not being maintained, meaning a good handful of bullets or a few explosives from Engineer's Worst Fucking Nightmare will bring your buildings down. Spreading out your buildings instead of grouping them up prevents them from being destroyed all at once by a few stickies. Oh, shucks. This also applies to putting your buildings next to a teammate's buildings. Don't do that. Spies, engineers' worst oh, fucking, fucking nightmare, nightmare, have special equipment that specifically targets you and your nest. Most important of which to note are sappers. Sappers are a sabotaging device that, when attached to a building, will disable their functionality and slowly drain their health, unless you destroy the sapper with your wrench. Spy checking is of critical importance when playing engineer. 
When your buildings go down, try to rebuild as soon as possible while keeping yourself alive. A dead engineer can't repair or rebuild. We need to summarize here. Always be checking for spies. Always be constructing your buildings. Always bespread them out. Ah! Spies have my centralized my team not checking for spies! Medic, the maniacal man of science, is the most important class on any team. Because of his role as the team's healer and his unique ability to grant invulnerability to his teammates via the uber charge. Medic has average health and is tied for the second fastest move speed, which allows him to keep up with his team without being outpaced by other classes. Medic also has the unique passive ability to slowly heal himself, which can be useful outside of the fight. His secondary weapon, the Medigun, is his most important tool. The Medigun rapidly heals injured teammates back to full health. It gives out infinite healing to his healing patient with no need for ammunition. As a medic, healing very hurt teammates is your top priority, naturally. Once you're healing your targeted teammate, the healing beam attaches to them, meaning you don't have to have your crosshair directly on them. You can simultaneously heal while looking around, maybe checking for enemies behind you. There is a certain range that your medigun can heal from before the beam breaks, however. When a teammate is fully healed up, you then apply Overheal, a temporary buff granting 150% bonus health on top of their base health. When you stop overhealing a patient, their overheal will decay over time, or be reduced through damage, until they're back to normal base health. If you rapidly switch between patients, you can have multiple teammates overhealed at once. As you heal teammates and build overheal, you will gradually build up the uber charge meter. When the meter reaches 100%, Medic will announce that he is fully charged, and you can right click to unleash the uber charge. 8 seconds of complete damage and vulnerability for yourself and your healing target. These make or break games, as it lets a team make a push against a strong defense such as multiple enemies alongside a sentry nest. Do note that Ubers grant damage immunity, but not knockback immunity. This means explosives can knock you around, pyros can still push you with air blasts, and sentry guns will push you backwards as well. To coordinate Uber pushes, communicate with your teammates, and definitely pop Uber if your target is nearing death. Most importantly, if you are about to die, definitely keep yourself alive by popping it instead of dropping it. A dead medic can't keep his teammates healthy, and also lets the enemy push ahead. An effective strategy is to Uber power classes, who have the firepower to break the enemy's defenses, such as soldier, pyro, demo, or heavy. But again, don't neglect other teammates when they're injured, as more teammates to protect you equals you living longer, meaning more healing for them. As for Medic's own defensive capabilities, his primary weapon is the syringe gun, which rapidly fires syringe projectiles in an arc. They don't do that much damage though, it's like bees. And his melee weapon is the bone saw, which he can play like a violin. The weaknesses section should be pretty quick. He is the highest priority target on the whole battlefield, so he needs to watch out for everybody. Dodging enemy attacks and staying alert for snipers and spies is critical. He doesn't have a whole lot to defend himself with in a 1v1 fight, so he relies on his teammates to fight for him. Using teammates for cover is a great idea. Let's recap. Make sure to heal all of your teammates, not just strong classes. Prioritize hurt teammates. Work with teammates to coordinate uber pushes. Pop it, don't drop it. <laughs> Nothing bad ever happens to the Kennedy! <laughs> Dick Mundy from Down Undy, also known as Sniper, is arguably the most powerful class in the game. Despite having low base health and average speed, his primary, the sniper rifle, is capable of on-command critical hit insta-kills against any class, as long as your aim is up to scratch. With his sniper rifle, it works in two different ways. Without using the scope, it always deals a flat 50 damage at any range with no falloff and perfect accuracy. The obvious drawbacks are that you aren't using the scope and no critical hits. When scoping in, you are suddenly able to hit headshots. Scoped shots to an enemy's head are guaranteed critical hits for a minimum of 150 damage. 
enough to take down five of the nine classes in an instant. However, while scoped in, you charge up the rifle's power. When the charge maxes out, it triples the rifle's overall damage. So a normal 50 damage uncharged body shot now does 150 damage when fully charged. And headshots benefit from this too. 450 damage. Enough to take down a fully overhealed heavy who has the highest possible health in the game. This makes Sniper an extremely powerful class for long range picks, or picking off high priority targets such as medics. Keep an eye out for targets like medics, heavies, as well as enemy snipers. When eliminating enemies, they will be shown your position via the freeze cam. Stay on the move instead of in just one predictable spot for too long. While you're certainly strong at long range, Sniper definitely lacks in short range potential. All that time spent staring down a scope leaves the Sniper open too, and enemies can easily catch you off guard, especially enemy spies. You aren't totally screwed though, as you can defend yourself with his secondary, the submachine gun, which deals okay rapid fire short range damage. If you need to get your hands dirty, his melee, the Kukri, will do the job nicely. The summary is thus. Be patient, practice more, stay on the move, and watch your back. Ahem. Gentlemen. Last but not least is the cunning, conniving spy. His low health and weak head on damage might seem unimpressive, but mechanically speaking, spy is one of the most unique but complicated classes in the game, utilizing his high speed and various weapons and gadgets to sabotage the enemy team. The spy only has one option for ranged combat, his primary, the revolver. Six shots. More than enough to kill anything that moves. If you need to fight back when retreating after being detected, this is your best bet. His only other direct weapon is the knife. It does lower damage than most other melee weapons and cannot randomly critically hit, which makes it weak outside his unique ability, the backstab. When you approach an enemy from behind and stab them with the knife, you execute a backstab, which will always instantly kill your target no matter how much health they have. This is especially useful against enemies who aren't paying attention to their surroundings, particularly snipers and engineers, huh? and is key to picking off medics too. Your other gadgets include the sapper, disguise kit, and invisibility watch. The sapper is a direct counter to the engineer's buildings. Attaching a sapper will disable an enemy building's functionality and slowly drain its health until the building is destroyed. But engineers can destroy your sappers. You have unlimited sappers though, so don't be afraid to replant them as needed. Engineers who are distracted maintaining their buildings are an important target. But make sure you sap their sentry first. If you kill the engineer but leave a nearby sentry alone, it will target you and kill you hilariously quickly. Next is the Disguise Kit, which is a fun one. You can assume a disguise of any class from either team. Attacking with the revolver or knife sheds your disguise, but placing sappers can be done while disguised, though your disguise will be shown planting a sapper which gives you away. Disguises always fool enemy sentry guns and can potentially fool enemies, allowing you to infiltrate behind enemy lines. You do need to try to act natural. Think like the class you're disguised as. Don't run directly at enemies, be careful not to bump into them as teammates pass through each other, and definitely be aware of enemies trying to spy check you. Avoid pyros at all costs. And lastly, the invisibility watch is an incredibly powerful tool. Right-clicking will cloak the spy, rendering him totally invisible for a short time, allowing him to infiltrate and stalk enemies undetected. It takes a second to fully cloak and two to decloak. Both actions make a sound audible to enemies, and you cannot attack or play sappers unless you are fully decloaked. Cloak is limited, but recharges when not in use or replenished wherever you get your ammo. Keep in mind, bumping into an enemy while invisible will reveal you, so try to avoid that. Also, if you come out of water or are on fire, the water dripping slash flames will show where you are. All of these gadgets provide unique opportunities to pick off important targets, taking longer flank routes, sneaking behind enemy lines to reposition for a backstab. To summarize, You're ready. Really? No. 
That was a lot, but you made it. Now you have an understanding of the basics of the default game. Of course, there's much more to learn that can't be explained so succinctly in this video, such as new weaponry, alternative game modes, navigating the dated UI, cheaters and trolls, etc. But these things are learned best with time, experience, and perhaps most importantly, a partner to dance this crazy dance with.